Hi everyone. This is the way of the righteous. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's a beautiful day. It's a day that the Lord has made. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's such a beautiful day and time and hour, despite all of the chaos in the world <laughs> we can rejoice and be glad in it right because that's something that's on the inside there's a peace on the inside there's a joy on the inside if you in the right room <laughs> and by right room is if you are in the kingdom hey christina if you are in the kingdom of god then you are in the Holy Spirit. The, the word says the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink. It is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. So that's where it is, right? So I pray that I'm finding you in your perfect peace. I'm not going to be with you long. I don't think God willing if he takes it over. But, um, you know, I wanted to I, I wanted to stay uh, faithful to what I said I'm going to be on here on Fridays. Um, but there's, you know, every week the Lord is adding to, every day the Lord is adding to you if you're listening, right? And this week has been a challenge, you know, and I always welcome the challenge because it's the testing of our faith, right? The trial is the testing of our faith. And, you know, we've been talking about the heart. Um, and this week, an old video came up that I had um, did in 2017. And it was because the Passover is coming up, the, the Jewish holiday Passover. And uh, in 2017, when I taught on it, I was, re I was comparing the actual Passover and how we clean for Passover in the Jewish house as to how it applies to this out spirit out self spiritually right so if you don't know let me give you a little run through so when it comes to Passover cleaning it's all the the symbol of Passover cleaning is about this bread right because when you in the in the uh, time of Passover, we fast with unleavened bread, right? There's no yeast. There's no yeast. Yeast represents that that those things that we don't want to let go. The the envy, the the malice, the anger. You know, the sin in your life. See that a little bit of sin, <laughs> a little bit of yeast. It will, it will, it will raise, it will puff up. It'll raise the whole loaf. It'll, you know, that's all you need is a little bit. Well, and this, this time in the season, we get rid of the least. So you have those little, those little, um, what some people call crackers, but that's what we eat for seven days to symbolize that this, um, the unleavened bread. Now, spiritually speaking, oh, let me go back. So when you're cleaning for Passover, you are in your house and you're looking for the crumbs because you're getting rid of all of the food that has anything to do with bread or, ye or any kind of yeast in it, right? And you, you get all of that out of your house. <laughs> so you're really going for them corners, right? And that's what in the spiritual, how do we apply that spiritually is that we're getting in those corners. <laughs> we're getting in the corners, those hidden things that we're not really either acknowledging in ourselves. Maybe we don't know because it hasn't been revealed to us because um, God is still working on our heart and we're still getting delivered. But there comes a time where we have to uproot, get un 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 or expose those hidden things those hidden things. So with that said, with that said, this is what we have to do. Now, the scripture that came to me earlier, um, hello to anyone. I don't see anybody coming in, but I, I see that there's, there's a number up there, but um, there's some, when it comes to preparing for deliverance, that's what we're going to go. When it comes to preparing for deliverance, let's go to the story 
of the Israelites, right? They, they're, they're in Egypt. That symbolizes them being under the thumb of the, the, the evil one, the world, right? They're in there and they're enslaved to this thing. They're enslaved to it. Well, they want to be free. They don't want to be a slave no more. See, somebody, you want to be free. Somebody who listening, if you want to be free from that thing that has you bound, there is a way. But the only way out, the only way out that stay, that keeps you out is when you start with truth and a sincere heart. Okay? That is the key. The first key. The first key to full deliverance. I'm talking freedom in God. Hey, Cheryl. The first key is that you must, you must. The Israelites said, they cried, the, the Bible says, I cried, they cried out with, uh, they cried out to God and he heard them. Well, what's the difference? Because there's a lot of times, <laughs> there's, it, there's a lot of times we cry out, you know? Oh God, please, I need your help, I need this. But they cried out with a sincere heart, a sincere heart with truth. You know, I was thinking about David. David, <laughs> I always think about David because David was a man after God's own heart. But what separated him was not that he didn't fall. It's not that he didn't make mistakes. He made a huge mistake with Bathsheba and tried to clean it up. And, and as he tried to clean up the mess, he made even more of a mess. Right? But when God, through the prophet, Expose that thing by it, expose it by the root and told him, you the man, you the one. He did not sit there and say, who are you talking about? Not me. He fell on his knees. I think he fasted for seven days. He didn't eat anything. And the one thing that he cried out for is create in me a clean heart because see David recognized that it had to be something in the heart. It had to be something going on in his heart to have allowed him to get to that point that he had somehow, not that God wasn't there, but he had separated himself from God enough to fall into such a sin as that, right? The heart, sincerity, and truth, it's got, it has to start there. Now, another example. We go, let's go to the mat. I, I had notes, y'all, but I, I knew like within an hour of coming on, it was like, it was so much that, that, that I was talking to the Holy Spirit for. So y'all bear with me as I, as I bring this, um, cause I want to bring it in a way that he wants me to. So Matt, so Matthew 7, and which one is it? Okay, it says, in Matthew 7 and 22, it says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly. Now I'm reading the NIV version. I never knew you away from me, you evil doors. Now, of course, nobody wants to be that one that gets to the end time and say, hey, <laughs> I did all of this work. I prophesied, you know, we do all, we do all kinds of things in the name of Jesus. And for, for the Lord to say, I did not know you, but what separate, if you can do all of that work, right? What is it? What is it that's going on on the inside or on the outside that actually separates you? Because we know it's not the work. You know, we've been talking about the, the person that has a form of godliness. But their hearts in 2 Timothy's, 2 Timothy's, we talk about that all the time, where they can, they can be lovers of selves, lovers of pleasure. They can be slanderous. They can be rude. They can be all, I mean, there's a whole paragraph of descriptions for this person who has a form of godliness. Now, how does, how does that, what does that look like? 
Because see, all of that is going on on the inside and on the outside, there's this mass. So we can be performing. We can be speaking. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love. Though I have the gift of prophecy and have faith that I can move mountains, but have not love. This it, I I I want to I want to make clear because I we've been talking we've been talking about this for weeks, but I don't think everybody is getting how serious this is. We are in the end times. This is the last days. This is. It was in, in, the, in the last days, there'll be perilous times. We end those perilous times. And there are still people who are professing that they are children of God, that they are brothers and sisters, they, that they have this, and they are still in darkness. And they're performing. And when I say performance, I mean performance like entertainment. They're performing. They can pick up a Bible. They can read it. But when the pressure comes, the fruit comes out. That's something you cannot hide. When, the, when, the, when Nathan went to um, Jesus, when he, was, when he was first introduced to Jesus, what did he say? He said, now this is a man of no deceit. No deceit. He wasn't boasting. He wasn't, uh, uh, he wasn't boasting in himself. He wasn't doing anything extra. But God knew his heart. He had no deceit in his heart. So the question that I have for somebody on today, check your motive. Are you checking your motive? See, sometimes we want to get into, we want to get in God because it looks good. Because we, we, we've exhausted everything else. We've exhausted that, you know, um, you know, it, okay, if you, yes, <laughs> there, are, there are many counterfeits. And, and the thing is, this, this, there are people who know that they counterfeits, right? Because the, the word of God said your folly will find you out. So it, that, that's not even a question. But you, you think you can fool somebody and you, you can get away with it for, for so long because, like I said, your folly will find you out. But why it, be, that before? That before phrase, before the folly found you, find you out, you deceiving your own self. And I was talking to somebody this week about how difficult it is to be in ministry, because in in ministry, the as a minister, as as a, a child of God, period, you want everybody to be free. You want everybody to be free. I talked to somebody today about the same, same thing. Yeah. Check your motive. Uh, I was talking to somebody today about the same thing. It's like, well, God loves everybody. Yes, he does. He can't help it because he is love. There's no alter ulterior motive in it. He is love. And sometimes love don't feel good. Sometimes love don't feel good. But we have to rightfully divide this word because there is a moment where he will give you over to your own desires. And somewhere we have uh, misunderstood that this is something that we need to, uh, that, that, that doesn't exist. Like there are some people that, we, that haven't been given over and we extend ourselves to such people, right? Because we haven't, we're not able to discern it. We don't know about it, how, whatever it is. But we, we have to recognize that there are, there is much as good as this in the world. There is deep, there is, um, there's darkness and we need to appropriate it. There are people who want to be saved and delivered, but they're lost. There are people who just need a knowledge of truth. I know I said this yesterday, but I need to say this again because I feel like the Holy Spirit is leading me on this one. There are people who just need a knowledge of truth. See, I'm still growing and I'm still looking for knowledge. 
you know, but I am at the point where I have increased my faith. See, the Bible says we need to increase, add to your faith, goodness and to goodness, knowledge. And to knowledge, I, I, I said this last week, and to, to add to your faith, goodness, goodness, knowledge. I think another version says virtue. Um, you, we're supposed to add to that uh, mutual respect. It's in the notes from last week. But there's a love there there's like a an increase. Mutual respect. We're adding on until we get to love. Until we get to love. Let me look that up real quick. I don't like halfway saying a scripture. I don't have nobody. If somebody can put it in the chat room again, um, the add to your faith. Okay. It's Second Peter's one and five. For this reason, okay, for this reason, make every effort. Thank you. One concerning that just two hours ago. Yeah, ex thank you, thank you, Cheryl. That exactly. Exactly. And what is, what's concerning me is that there are some people who are deceiving themselves into believing that that doesn't apply to them. Like somehow I'm special. Sometimes, somehow if, if nobody notices it, it just goes under the table. But the word said your folly will find you out. So it says for this reason, Make every effort to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control. See, some people, again, some people have just got to the point of, I have faith. I have faith in God. I've, I've declared, you know, we decree and declare that I have faith in God. Okay. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. He died and he rose on the third day. And because of his blood, my sins are forgiven. They have faith. Right? They have spoken. They have the spoken word. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say that correctly. They have spoken the words out of their mouth. But then that virtue, that goodness, right? That goodness, that God is good. And, and as you continue to walk with him, then you start to reflect that goodness, right? So, but then you got to go to knowledge. Now you have to have enough knowledge in you, which is the word of God, so that when the devil comes, he can't he can't take you to and fro or did, 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 uh, did God really say you couldn't have, you couldn't eat from that tree? You know, he can't throw you off because you got enough, enough knowledge in you, <laughs> you know? So now we get from not now people who are stuck, they only got to the knowledge part, but they don't move on. Is that intellectual, the Pharisees, the self-righteous, the legalistic people, they get stuck right there. I got knowledge. So I'm just going to throw around a couple of scriptures. I'm just going to read the Bible. I'm just going to do this. I'm do this. That's all they, this, that's they, right there. And some think that that's enough because at that point, you got a form of godliness. I can say I have faith. I got enough virtue now that people were like, oh, he's such a good person. Oh, oh, she's such a good lady. And then we go from that to self-control. Now, again, this is a place where a lot of people might fall off when temptation come. When temptation come. What happens when the temptation comes? Because that's when your what's in you. See, the word say, God is not the one who tempted you. It's your evil desires. What's in your heart? Check your motive. Why are you following Christ? Why do you have faith? What's deep? What are you running from? See, some of us are just running away from pain. And we know that if I run to this place, it's safe. It's a safe place, but I ain't really, I'm not willing to die for it. I want to run to the, I want to run to the mercy seat to get away.
from the from the mess I created, to get away from from the slander. I want to run to the mercy seat. But when I get there and I feel better, what happens then? What happens then? Oh, okay, I got my sugar rush. Time to go back to me. Because see, that thing that was in your heart, you didn't go there in sincerity and truth. You didn't go there humble and broken. And for some people, it's very hard to do because you're double-minded. There's a part of you that wants to go. But then there's that other part of you that say, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm good. There's a part of you that doesn't want to see yourself under the light of truth. Yes, yes. And it and you you see how far you can go before that trial that comes and tests what's really in your heart. That's why David said, create in me a clean heart. That's why Paul said, I die daily to this flesh. The fle that, that that flesh is going to come out. It's going to come out. And I believe that the devil will wait until you in such a position, such a position. He took you all the way to the mountaintop before he sent the greatest test of all. Are you ready? You can fake it all the way to you till you think you made it. And everything that's still in you. See, God did not, did, listen, the words that's in the Bible is not just wasted space. It's just not something that they created to say, oh, I just, we need to get to, you know, let's see how, how many how many pages in the Bible. Okay, well, I, I'm, I'm looking about 1,500, we need to get to about 15,000 pages so we're just going to keep writing just to be writing. No, there is a reason for every word in the Bible. And it's to help you, it's to help me. Stay in him, remain in him until the perfect one comes. Until the perfect one comes, because we can do nothing outside of love. And see, God is, that's where he's trying to take us. This word says, again, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance. See, once you, once you get control of that flesh, once you can submit to God, resist the devil and watch him flee, then you can persevere. You can push past whatever temptation is in front of you whatever trials in front of you. And as you're doing that, he's building you, your character. And then we go into godliness. Godliness. Because once you get that character, see, the character is on the inside. When the pressure comes, the character comes out. Pressure on the inside. And then you can do, you can have that brotherly love and that brotherly, oh, I say brotherly kindness, but uh, mutual mutual uh, love is, is a couple of versions. And then you step into love. It starts with faith. It ends with you abiding in love. The kingdom of God if God is love, then that kingdom of God is love. With righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. And as you abide, hey Roger, you abide in it. You cannot abide in it with filth. You can, it, you can look like it. There's another scripture that, that says um, that there, there's certain things that will not come into the kingdom. He's talking about the flesh. 
You know, that's that those things cannot exist in the kingdom. If you have lust, it cannot exist in the kingdom. Unforgiveness cannot exist in the kingdom. And what you do is you put other people in danger when you do. When you try to carry that into fellowship, you put other people in danger. Now, we, you know, this whole coronavirus um, thing, you know, this, it's going on in the world right now. It's, a, it's an example of exactly what I'm talking about. We've been, they've been talking about social distancing, right? We need to distance ourselves from, from other people, say about six, six feet away so that you don't contaminate them. We wear gloves. We, 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 we're washing our hands so we don't contaminate our brothers and sisters. And we're taking care, you know, most, most of us are taking care to the point where we're not even going outside. They have closed buildings. I wish they would do that for more things, you know, for there's, there's a lot of sin out here. You know, we, we took that much care on who we actually are involved with intimately. <laughs> Can you imagine if they were to shut everything down and say, hey, from this point on, nobody can do this. Let's stop this AIDS academic, um, uh, p uh, pandemic or whatever you want to call that. What if, what about that? Those things, but that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother, <laughs> it's a whole nother video. Point is yes. Others are jeopardized. Yes. So we can see it. We can see it now. We see the numbers. But we don't see the spirit, the spirit, spiritual part of this, right? We don't see the demons, as we call it, that are transferred, that are manifest. I, this invisible, this invisible, this invisible thing that is manifest, that is transferred because somebody, somebody didn't love somebody else enough to stay holy. That is for you. That's for me. It is, we have to do this for each other. We first, we have to do it for God. Hey, Audrey, first we have to do it for God. And see that way when your brother and sister get, get you know, or what I call it, when y'all get on my nerves, <laughs> it ain't about y'all no more. It's about me and God. See, I got this. I have to stay right for him with him. But the indirect, the overflow of me staying right in him is that I don't contaminate you. You don't contaminate me. So it is imperative that we increase our faith, that we grow in this thing and until we reach love. So that we can love one another. So that we become one body, one unity. The Lord keeps saying this. He said, so that the world will know you better. So the, the world will know that I sent you, right? There's another scripture. This was Ezekiel. Um, it was talking about holiness. Holy name. Ezekiel 20. This way, oh, it's Roger still in here. I know Roger be knowing this stuff. Quick. Okay. Then, okay. Um, so this is Ezekiel 36, verse 23. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been prof profaned among the nations. The name, hold on. That's not it. That's not it. I'm going up. Hold on. You know what? I, I actually have this in my notes. I have it in my notes. Given an open invitation to destroy our lives. Yes, our actions or our lack of action is impacted in the realm of the spirit. Amen. Speak that, speak in truth. Okay, Ezekiel 36, 23. So I was right. Okay. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. The name you have profaned um, um, amongst them. Then the nations 
will know that I am the Lord, declared the Lord God, when I show my holiness in you. Okay, I mean, that, that's what I was trying to get to. The, then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when I show my holiness in you before their eyes. This is how God, this is how God shows his holiness in you, in me. For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all the countries. I will bring you back into your own land. I will also sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. See, as somebody trying to skip that pro process, we cannot skip the process. You can't come in dirty and throw some words on. That's what he was saying. You, you clean the outside, but you ain't cleaning the inside. He was talking to the Pharisees. Whitewashed on the outside. But what about the inside? And for some of us, you know, we may have done it one time. And then we go on in ministry and everything gets so, you get so used to how things going and we forget to, to go, you know, how we, we do that spring cleaning. That's what I love about some of the principles that we can learn from the traditions of the Old Testament, such as Passover, is that we, we, we are, uh, you know, every year we have to examine the heart. We have to clean or think about those hidden things that could have could have uh, collected over the year but sometimes we get in this and we think we're good and and, and we're, nobody checking nothing nobody's checking so i will also sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean I will cleanse you from all your impurities and all your idols. This right here is where we have a problem. Some of us have cleaned ourselves or disguised ourselves with false humility, pride, It looks, it looks good on the outside. It looks like the form of godliness. I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, the, I'm just a daughter of the Lord and the Lord, I'm blessed and highly favored. But what's your motive when you say that? Where is it coming from? What spirit is speaking? Because you can say it all day long, but what happens when the Lord says, when you say, Lord, Lord, I've done this, I've done that. I've ministered for 35 years. I've ministered for 10 years. I've been under ministries. I've been following your name. I read your Bible every day. And he says, I don't know you. Because it's all on the surface. It's not in the heart. You have not worshiped me in spirit and in truth. and spirit and in truth that is the reason why he died he told the woman at the well the time is coming and the time is near that you will not have to go to jerusalem do y'all understand the benefits of being in him is that we don't have to go to jerusalem you don't have to go to the church you don't have to go to the synagogue you can worship him in spirit and in truth, but you got to have a clean heart and you have to be lined up with him. You can't be talking one thing out of one side of your mouth and another out is something else here. You can't be professing his name, but got hidden secrets in your heart that you don't want to deal with because you think I can't see him. 
You think the brother over here can't see him? And, I, and I'm going to tell you, every time I have been involved in a group of people that put on the, 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 the form of godliness, it only takes a matter of time before them spirits come out. That is the biggest problem that we've had in the church. It's the biggest problem we had. And God said last year, he was exposing everything. And you see it happening. He's exposing leaders. He's exposing church. He's exposing all of this uh, sugar-coated down doctrines. Because it don't take all of that. It doesn't take all of that. Listen, he's only after one thing. He is after your heart. He is after you worshiping him in spirit and in truth. He is after you saying, I submit to you. I'm going to resist this devil. And he's giving you the power and the fire to do so. You don't need to fake it. But the death, the death that you have to do to the old self, to the, to the, to the old self. He said, and said, I will give you a new heart. Hey, he said, I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, but you got to die. The old self got to die. It's got to die. And it don't feel good. It don't look good. But the end of it is good. It's his goodness. It's not on your works. It's on his works. And somehow we've even got that twisted. Because the person who's walking around thinking that I can just do, I can just read the word and I can have this form of godliness. I can speak it. I can, you know, I can be on my Facebook page and all I got to do is post stuff about Jesus all day long and about God all day long or even about the Torah. It looks good. But it profits you nothing without God. He said all these things you can do. You can speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love. You can have faith that moves mountains. Do y'all understand what that means? See, we say these words, but we're living in a time now that you better know what that means. Faith that can move mountains. That means you can speak something and it happens and you can do it outside of God. And then you thinking because something happened that you got it going on, but your folly will find you out. That's what we see happening right now in the church. He said, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and to carefully observe my audience audiences it's this is something that he does it's not something that you just pick up and put on he does it as you come to him in spirit and in truth as you clear out, as you put down the, the envy, as you put down the sin, as you clean your heart. David said, do not take your countenance from me, your Holy Spirit. Do of, of all the things, Lord, because he knew how, how, how valuable it was. I messed up. Some of us can say that. I messed up. Again, they cried out to God. I can imagine in, in Egypt every day being a slave, every day doing what the slave masters say. How many times they had to say, oh my God, Lord, I, I, can't, I don't want to do this. How, how 
how inconvenient, how uncomfortable, how unsatisfying that life was. But it came to a point where they said, enough is enough, Lord. Remember us, hear our cry. And they said, then he remembered the covenant that he made. He heard them. Is God hearing you? Because when you're just speaking words, and they fall into the floor. He can't hear you. But when you come from here. See I've been there. I was so broken. And I was so lost. I was in a place. Of darkness. That no man. No man could pull me out. And I called on God. And he answered. So I know that this is no joke. I'm not speaking because I just read a story. I'm telling you about uh, my life. Nobody can tell me. That this is not true. Because I lived it. And when he took me out of that darkness, it was a lot of Tasha still there. And I kept allowing him to work in me, to burn all matters of evil in me. I'm not talking evil like, because we always try to associate evil with, okay, I went to the store and I stole something. I wasn't that type of person. See, on the, on the outside, I was good, but I wasn't good enough for the kingdom. See, we can't be good enough. So this was about me lining myself up with God's will. Not my will anymore, but your will be done. And I didn't know what that looked like because I still had so much of me in there. That's what I like, Lord, but that's not what the words say. So you got to drop it. Well, I, I don't mind going out and doing it. No, 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 no. But that's contrary to the word. So you got to drop it. I had to cut some things off. I had to learn a whole new language. And I did it. And I cannot tell you the benefits of it. And I still have to do it. Every day I die. Every day I die. And then to be honest with you, it's a moment to moment. Every time somebody comes to you with some kind of trial, somebody comes to you with a back talk, somebody comes to you trying to, trying to push your uh, ability to love them. I'm not talking about love them as a doormat. I'm talking about love them where you're staying in God because I refuse to step out of him. But see, the enemy is trying to test you. Hey, Jason, the enemy's job is to pull you out. We got to be like Job. <laughs> Job said, that, hey, you silly woman. See, there's nothing. There's nothing that's going to keep me from doing what God told me to do. Now, if it was something I didn't know that I, I just tripped up in, and I'm not saying use that for an excuse, but you know, sometimes you go, you go, uh, you, you make a laugh, you be like, oh, I'm in the wrong room. Okay, get out. Forgive me, Lord. I'm going this direction. But see, when there's something in your heart, when there's something in your heart, you still got that taste. Yes, you still got that taste for something in the world. You still got that taste for darkness. You know what's going to happen? When you step in that room, you be like, oh, okay. The devil going to fool you. Oh, it's okay. I'm going to stay in here for about two minutes. See, what, see what's going on. I see my friend over there. I see my friend over there. What's up? And you end up in there. What, what you thought was going to be two minutes will be a whole year. Two years, three years. And by the time you realize you so far in darkness to come out of there, it's going to take you longer. And you're going to come out of there with, with what you went in with and seven more. And some of us have the audacity to be in that room of darkness and walk around talking about, I'm a woman of God. I'm a man of God. Anyway. And the Lord is saying, I do not know you. So take off the mask. Take off the mask. 
get into the light of God so he can expose that darkness. If you willing. See, because I've learned in this walk that some people just not willing. There are people who will be saved and that's people who won't. There's people who want to be saved and there's people who don't. And then there's the people who want to play. Like this world is a VIP club. As long as I'm, a, I'm around, it's going to attract good things. But you messing it up. See, this is why he said they're no longer good for the faith. I've rejected them. Why? Because they're no longer good for the faith. They come in with whatever they got going on. And they really don't want to be saved. They really don't want to separate themselves. They're just using God and his word. And it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Now God's going to expose them. I don't, I don't, I, see, I don't want to be exposed like that. I don't. I don't. So, check your heart. If you haven't done it today, do it again. I mean, do it today before you go to bed. Think about all the things that you've done. All the people that, that you may have done something to. Knowing and unknowing. And, and get into that posture of humility. And Lord, 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 check my heart. Check my heart. Is there anything in there? See, because that, that, problem, that, that problem that you have today may not have started today. It may have started last week or last month. Is there some people that I need to forgive? Is there some sins that I have justified because of my circumstance, because of this, my situation? Have I justified some behaviors because I think because God loves me? Yes, he loves you. But let me tell you that whatever that is, is keeping you from him. I, I used to use this example all the time. If I take some bleach and I spray the counter, right? There is nothing, no bacteria that's going to exist. That is the kingdom of God. There, in the kingdom of God, there is no darkness. That's why we have to get rid of it. You know, we say Shabbat is Shabbat is is Shabbat is for man, <laughs> not uh, uh, not man for Shabbat. It's it's it's, it's kind of like the same principle. Getting rid of sin is for you. God's not going to change, but for you to abide in Him, you got to be. You have to get to this place of holiness. I'm not talking about old school churchy, what we call <laughs> Holy Ghost Rollers, where you can't do this, you can't. We're not talking about the legalistic. We're talking about holiness, where the Father can use you in Jesus' name. All right, I think I'm going to close out. I, I wasn't going to go the whole hour, but this right here is rough. It's rough. It's rough. And I know for, for the minister, you know, I know there's some ministers on here. When you, we, we know how it is to want to be out here and being used by God, you know. And it's, it's so many people that need help. And there's people out here who are dangerous or, or can be a danger to the one who wants to help. And we need to be to be wise in how we do this. And I think this is why God is really um, putting a light on this. You know, we talk about all these ministers, Cheryl, the journey is no, yeah. We talk about, you know, all the churches that's, that's having a problem, you know, especially with, with Jezebel, and then, you know, the world, we call it narcissism. We talk about like the people who are really struggling you know, the people who in what we call infiltrate these places and and then they just take over. But a lot of it's because we have not, we are not aware that those things exist and we don't understand the boundaries that we need to put on. And then 
when we understand they exist because we're doing it in such an intellectual way, we're not even recognized that some of the people that you pointing fingers or are you putting this label on, those people are not the ones that's the problem. So in my experience, what I saw was all the true prophets of God, true women, men of God, they were the ones who were being labeled as Jezebels and, and, and narcissists and, you know, witch doctors, whatever they want to call, they were the ones. And I'm like, that is not the case because the leaders was trying to intellectually understand what that spirit looks like. You know, again, we pick up a book and we want to read, oh, this, this is, this is the, the, the guidelines of how we determine who's a Jezebel. There's 21 characteristics, <laughs> you know? And it could be anybody because Jezebel doesn't have a look. It's a manipulator. Looking for the rich word. Yes. She's a manipulator. He's a manipulator, an intimidator. And they're going to look like whatever they need to be until it's time to say no. And then they come out. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go. You guys, I so thank you for joining me on tonight. I hope you are um, you, you're in your perfect peace. You're in your perfect peace. And I hope that um, the rest of your night will be peaceful. Stay in him. Remain in him. Remain in his joy. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will see you next Friday. In Jesus' name. Bye, Christina.